wanted to take a minute and compare and contrast Azure Synapse Analytics with Snowflake. This is not really a fair comparison because these products don't line up perfectly. Let's talk about this. Uh, and by the way, these opinions are just my opinions. I, I mean, they're not comprehensive. I didn't do an exhaustive, like, these are the things Snowflake does better and Snaps does better. These are just some things I've observed about these two products. So on the left of this, you'll see what Azure Synapse can do. Azure Synapse has a whole bunch of things it can do. It, can, it has dedicated SQL pools. That's an MPP relational store with column store indexing that scales out per nodes, right? It also has dedicated Spark pools. Same thing, MPP, but it's Spark engines, not relational engines, and it's really good for um, non-relational data for JSON data for parquet files for Delta Lake, things like that. Then it also does like graphical ETL pipelines, which it means that you can create pipelines using icons from back and forth. As a matter of fact, let me just show you this. So let's go over here to Azure Synapse Analytics, right? And here you can see this is dedicated SQL pools with SQL pool tables here, right? And uh, this is the MPP SQL engine. Um, there's also, like here, let's take a look at some graphical pipelines. These are graphical pipelines that you can design, right? We also have notebook-based pipelines, right? We can look at and, you know, build Python scripts, Scala scripts that um, are all, you know, these notebook cells with Markdown and things like that that, we're, that we know and love, right? Um, so there's central monitoring and alerting here where we can see, we can look at any of our pipeline runs, we can look at our data, we can look at anything and have a central place for troubleshooting and error reporting. Okay, so why do I mention all of this? It's because if we go back to this list, really Snowflake is really only compared to dedicated SQL pools. Snowflake is a, primarily a relational engine that separates storage with analytical processing and it scales out the compute while um, really keeping the storage relatively affordable, but the compute can get rather expensive. That's very, very similar in model to a dedicated SQL pool in Synapse. But everything else, Snowflake doesn't have an answer for. For instance, if you wanted to do Spark pools, you'd probably have to use something like Databricks to do that. If you wanted graphical ETL pipelines, you'd need Informatica to do that. If you needed um, notebooks, that might be Spark to do that, right? Um, if you needed um, some type of visualization tool where in the Synapse ecosystem, you would use Power BI integration. In Snowflake, you'd use Tableau or Looker or QuickSight or something like that, right? And then there's nothing that will do central error reporting like Azure Monitor or Azure Log Analytics. You'd have to use something like Splunk, um, which is difficult to integrate sometimes and can be very expensive and difficult to maintain. So my point is that because Synapse has one combined ecosystem and Snowflake requires a lot of different products to do the same thing, that Synapse really allows the data engineer to focus on delivering value to the organization and not spend a lot of time in plumbing. like trying to get these things secure, trying to get all of these things talking to each other, trying to get all of these things uh, error reporting to the same place, right? Um, you spend a lot of time doing that when you should be spending time uh, cleaning data, preparing data, organizing data, and getting the data as quick as possible to your users. That's the main thing. So the features that I miss in Snowflake when I'm using it that Synapse has? Well, Synapse has Delta Lake, which is great. Um, allows time travel, allows small little commit files that can get vacuumed up and, and uh, repartitioned up into large parquet files where compression does really well over large um, files. It has central monitoring, like we've already mentioned, central security, like we've already mentioned. Now, private endpoints. So in Azure Synapse, if you wanted a private IP address not over the internet so that it could work with your private subnet, like over um, Azure Express Route, you can do that in Synapse. If you wanted to do that in Snowflake, you'd have to go to their top tier pricing, their top tier dedicated offering. You're gonna spend a lot of money to do that. All their other offerings, um, they do not offer private endpoints, which means that if you're going to move data in and out of Snowflake or you're going to query data in Snowflake, you're going to do that over a public IP address, um, which a lot of organizations have um, audit and compliance requirements that say they can't move data over a public IP address. Um, Synapse has integrated login with Azure Active Directory. That's really cool because it allows you to use one login for your reporting, for Power BI reporting, for your SQL databases, for your 
ADLS parquet files for your spark tables, like all of those things can use one mechanism for reporting. And the final thing that I wish Snowflake had is row level and column level security and column encryption. So you can like row by row in Synapse say, um, these people can see this data, these people cannot, and you can encrypt entire columns. Uh, those things just don't appear in Snowflake. So I like Snowflake. Now, where do I like it? I think Snowflake is an excellent serving layer. Like if we were going to go to a Lambda architecture and we were going to say, okay, where does Snowflake fit here? Snowflake fits at the serving layer where you create star schemas and you have analysts and data engineers and data scientists all interacting with the data um, at the serving layer. That's very good. But everywhere else at the raw layer, at the data pipeline cleaning, at the alerting and monitoring, at the security, Snowflake it does not have as good a solution as Synapse does, in my opinion. Anyway, hopefully that clarifies it for you. Uh, you're welcome to comment below if you have a differing opinion or you think I'm off the mark, but uh, I thought I'd just share that. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.